Hello there, I'm Tom from Smart Aerials, uh, broadcasting all the way from Smart Aerials HQ. I'm in our, currently our stock room slash our lunch room, uh, where we keep our stock in the, in the covers behind, which is fortunate given that I'm giving a demonstration on, uh, on stock we keep and the difference between cereal and wall plates, uh, and where we eat our lunch, which uh, I'm not currently doing. So, <laughs> um, in this video, I'm going to show you the difference between aerial satellite wall plates. Uh, hopefully, this will help you choose the right plate for your system. Or certainly uh, identify what your what your wall plate is currently doing uh, to help you fault find and stuff like that. I mean, and just quite quite understand the TV system, uh, which uh, I'm sure will be of benefit to someone watching this video. So without any further ado, let's begin from left to right, or from your right to left. Depends if you're watching the other way, aren't you? So uh, we're going to start with a, a traditional coaxial wall plate. Uh, now what this does, it takes a cable in. Uh, from, from a TV aerial and it will send us in like the front. So this, this is probably the, the most common one. This is what we call a unscreened wall plate. Uh, if you see there, and that makes it means that all, all the connections are open to the elements. So uh, where, where that, that's a weak point, potentially where there's uh, interference in the air, uh, you know, electrical interference from you know, sort of electrical devices and stuff like that. It all has a potential to, to, potential to get into the system on here. So this is a weak point. Um, because of the way this works. This is also a uh, design for a loop wire. If you look, it's got two sets of bits going in. I hope you can see that. Uh, which, is, to be honest, a load of crap. You never want a loop wire system. Uh, it won't match for 75 ohms. I won't, I won't go to that, but you should never ever loop wire a system. It won't work properly. Uh, it's very common with um, electricians. Certainly always have electricians, but they're, they're loop wire sockets and stuff like that. Can't do it with uh, TVL. It won't work. Um, but that's, that's what that does. So, on to the next one. It looks very similar when we go around it, but this is actually what we call an isolated wall plate. So it's a single coaxial isolated wall plate. And <coughs> this is basically an unscreened wall plate with the um, added benefit or hindrance, depending on how you're using it, of this will not allow a DC voltage to pass through it. And that is identified by uh, that little black smudge there, that's the isolated symbol, and also by the little blue resistors, which you'll see there. Um, you, there's actually another one under there. Hopefully, you, you might need to zoom in and have a little look. Um, uh, and what do these do? These do so where there's line power present or DC voltage present, these will um, stop it. So if you're going that way or that way, uh, trying to send a voltage, uh, it won't it won't go any further. And you're probably, you're probably thinking, why well, do I want to send the voltage or or, or anything like that? Or um, it's, it's where it's where line power is present. So. You might have a power supply unit in one room and a master amp, and you use the coax to send 12 volts up the cable or 24 volts, whatever the power supply is, uh, to power the equipment, and this will prevent that from happening. So, if you were to take the socket off and put one of these on, your aerial system will no longer work. And also, another common thing where these things get in the way is with sort of sky playback systems and all this sort of stuff, where you've got the magic eye, the remote eye in the upper room. That requires a voltage to send up to it to, to power the eye, so it can send the infrared commands back. And this will stop that happening, this little sod. Uh, so you're probably thinking, why would we ever want to use these? Well, um, they do have a good purpose. There's a time and place for them, that's obviously why I make them and sell them, but uh, it's particularly for electrical safety. Uh, you might want to use these on very large TV systems, or certainly with a lot of equipment connected, so that under full conditions, or um, there's a potential for the electrical, you know, Get a current to build up uh, and you could potentially get a shock from it, especially under full conditions. So big blocks of flats you might find a lot of these uh, and that will just stop one flat from electrocuting another flat. <laughs> so you could have some one sod in one flat, you know, jack in the, uh, the, 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 the coaxial cable into the mains uh, and it has, it has the potential to electrocute some in another room because it's, it's just a bit of copper going in between, in another flat, sorry. Um, I'm not saying that that's, that's what's going to happen, but that, that's, that's what these are designed for. They're designed for electrical safety. Um, not so common these days because we, we tend to earth our own satellite systems because um, we need line power present, so we need to be able to send line power through to power the satellite side of the, the system. So uh, you, only, you only find them on occasion, but we still keep them in, ca in case we need them. So if Earth and a system's going to, so if, if, we're, if we're brought into a job and we've got to do some work and Earth and a system's going to be really problematic, just to cover ourselves, we might put a, a nice little wall plate on. So we've, we've, we've made measures to keep make the uh, system safe. So that's what that does. So next on the list, we have our screened wall plates. Now I've got two examples here. I've got a satellite wall plate, uh, identified by all the 
this actually says sat on it, but it's got an F connector on the front. Uh, and we've got a TV area wall plate, which you can use for radio as well. Um, and that's got the coaxial plug on front. And th these are these are better because <laughs> I'm still getting a bit out of breath here from the talking. Um, the, the, the cable termination itself is, is enclosed inside a metal um, surrounding. So with, with this type of one, you would unscrew the, the connections there. You'd shove the, uh, well you'd shove, you'd insert the cable and you'd screw it down professionally. And then you'd screw that back down. And then the whole termination is encased in metal, which will protect it from outside interference. So that's, that's kind of what they do. It's also why um, radio, because radio waves don't pass through metal, so you might have an area on a full line loft, it won't work because it just reflects it. Uh, and certainly you get a lot of people, um, not a lot of people, but there's some famous instances with, um, I'm not going to name names, but they, they, they felt they were allergic to these radio waves that are in the air and they're putting on the tinfoil hats and stuff like that. And that's what they're doing. So there is, there is some sort of method behind the madness. Um, but that's what they do. So it's, it's, all, it's all there uh, and it's all screened. And certainly when we use double screen cables nowadays, that, that preserves the screen right the way along. So there's no weak point. If you've got a, a single screen cable, which is just a load of you know, rubbish anyway, you could argue that these aren't necessary because the cable itself is a big weak point. But um, we want to be using these ones because we are professionals and we want to do things properly. Okay, so next on the list, uh, we've got the modular type wall plates. Now this is an example of a module, a one, a one gam module, but it will take two or up to two connections inside there. So it's basically just a bit of plastic in which you can clip things inside. Now this is just one example. You can get what's called half modules, uh, where you can put one, one, insert one thing in, or you can get like a quad, which is a two gang, and you put four modules in. Uh, when I show the modules now, it's gonna start making sense. Uh, so these are examples of modules. This is what's called a, a satellite module. So it's like an F connection, uh, and it's, it's such a screen one, but you can get unscreened ones too and that's a coaxial IEC module. Uh, and what these do, they just clip in place. So you can sort of build and make your own wall plates. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, and we, we keep a wide variety of stuff. So rather than going out and buying twin satellite wall plates, because we're finally ever going to need them, we'll just buy a load of these, and a load of F modules, and we can make twin wall plates. So if we've got sort of Sky Plus or something like that, we can use them. So I've just clipped them in place, and now you can see I've made a TV aerial and satellite wall plate. Uh, now this is great um, for lots of reasons because you can, like saying, you can build a crate, but you can also get other types of insertions. So you might have audio cables, you might have a phono cable. You can put take one of them out and put a phono module in, or speaker cables. They can terminate into here. So you can do lots of things. Also, you can change these around for something that matches your wall plates. So you're I'm talking about your electrical wall plates. So you might have sort of chrome sockets or something like that. In which case. You might be able to get the chrome sockets to match and insert these and it might just go nicer with your system. Uh, uh, just for further demonstration, I'm going to unclip one of these. They, they easily unclip. They've got like two little clips here that just push down and comes out the front. I've got a uh, HDMI module, HDMI module, uh, which HDMI cable goes in the front and then the cable that goes up to your TV goes into that female HDMI socket and then Go up and into TV. So I've got one of these at home <coughs> because I want to put the TV up on the wall and I didn't want any cable showing. So we've got a socket, we've got the uh, mains point or a few spurs behind up our TV and we've got the aerial sockets and the data cables. But I also wanted the flexibility of being able to plug something in down the bottom. So um, if I have my laptop, uh, that's me time the keys by the way. <laughs> if I'm a laptop, I could plug that in you know, from the HDMI to the laptop and it'll cover my, uh, on my TV screen, but I commonly use it for my uh, Amazon Fire Stick, which goes from room to room, and I'll just unplug it, plug it in, and then I'll go, I'll go to another room with it, so it, it's, you know, sort of convenience. Uh, and plus, the added benefit, I don't need any equipment on the show, so when I'm done with it, I can unplug the equipment, and all I've got on the wall is a, you know, sort of a HDMI module, which looks, I can get it in there, Like that, uh, that's sort of like that, uh, minus the satellite side because I didn't, I didn't need all my equipment under the stairs, so I don't need air sockets in my lounge. Um, so that, that's that's what modular face plates do. So that's why you might use them. Next on our list are well going forward. Certainly we've got our combination wall plates. So <coughs> diplex, triplex, quadplex wall plates, and uh, the, the, the principles are with a diplex and a triplex and a quadplex wall plate. 
is it's designed to separate a combination of signals. So it's very common with uh, TVA or you know, communal systems where you've got where you want to give every resident, you know, s satellite, TV aerials, FM, DAB, rather than running four cables to every you know place, you can run it on two uh, or you know or less, depending on what type of system you've got, uh, by combining some of the frequency bands onto one cable. Now because uh, FM DAB you know, TV aerial and satellite, they use different frequency bands. We can put them all next to each other and they're fine, that, that, there's no problem. It's only when, you know, you only get issues when one's too strong, it might start overloading some of the other signals. Uh, but otherwise, because they sit nicely, um, they, 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 that's fine, you can, you can do that with one cable. So, for example, FM and DAB, FM uses, oh, sort of off the top of my head, the 89 megahertz to 110 megahertz frequency band, uh, which is in the VHF. DAB uses what, 215 to 230 rough-ish megahertz. Again, it's in the VHF. Um, that wasn't DAB, but this is TV now, this one. That uses, what, 470 to about 800 megahertz, depending if you're counting 4G and 5G when that comes off. Um, that, that, that's the TV megahertz band. And then we've got the satellite intermediate, intermediate frequency, which is from about um, <coughs> 2G down to about uh, 900 megahertz. Um, that's intermediate frequency after the, the switching down the oscillation from the LMB. Uh, so then they can, that, they, they just, it just separate it, that's what it does. So this one here, which is a triplex wall plate, it looks like there's three separate connections and three different things, but there's not. It's just one connection. So one, you'd unscrew that clamp and one cable would go in, you'd screw it down, uh, and then that does a separation. Obviously, for it to work, you can't just change your wall plate. So if you've got a TV area wall plate, you can't just take one of them off which I've actually seen this happen before, and put one of them on, and, oh, why's the satellite not working? I was like, well, you haven't got a satellite dish, sir. Uh, <laughs> you have to combine those, you have to physically combine the signals first on a diplex or triplexer, quadplexer, depending on what you're using, okay? Uh, that has a downside that you can't run twin satellite for it, so if you've got recordable satellite receivers, you can't do it through that unless you put some sort of SCR multi-switching or something like that, but uh, we're, that's going to take us down a rabbit hole when we start talking about that sort of stuff, so... Next on the left, we've got quadplex wall plates. Now, a quadplex, um, I'm sure you can figure this out, is essentially a triplex wall plate. So, SAT1, TV, and FM, and DAB, that's a triplex wall plate. That is just that. But we've got a second connection for SAT2, uh, <coughs> which basically means we put our sat separate satellite receiver in, and this will take two connections in. So, one be the triplex cable, and one SAT2 is just a straight join, a straight F connection. Uh, so that's, that's how that works. It's, it's worth noting that with sort of blocks of flats and communal systems and all this sort of stuff, typically you don't want really to be messing about trying to find what cable's which. You would just put in a multi-switch amplifier which puts TV, satellite and FM on all the cables. So more often than not, if you were to come out of SAT2 with a, of a lead and then go into your, t into your TV socket, into your TV aerial socket in your TV, if you tune it in you probably will get free view like you would there. Um, not to say it's all the time, but I'm talking ninety percent of the time that'll work. Uh, that could also go onto a uh, triplexer, so you could separate your satellite and TVFM. For not too sure you'd want to do that, but you might you might want to do that. But I'm just sort of saying that's a possibility. Oh, okay, here's one. So if you had a single satellite receiver in in your lounge and a Freeview TV, you could put them all on there, and on Sat two you could run the cable from that into another room and put a triplexer in, or a triplex, another triplex wall plate, and then you'd have TV satellite available in that room too. So just to sort of let you know that that sort of exists and how, how that works. Uh, and this again is, is a quadplex module, um, a quadplex wall plate, but it's, it's an insertable module. So with this one, I'm not going to mess about trying to get it out, because it's got four, four things you've got to hold down at once. And, um, it, <laughs> I might look a bit stupid on camera doing it. So, um, but that, that just clips in. So it's the same sort of principle as that, with the two modules, but this here has got a complex insert. So again, you see, you've got a bit more flexibility, flexibility with these things. That's what that is. Uh, and finally, we have the multi-service outlet. Now there's loads of different types of these on the market. This particular one has a quadplex wall plate, a return socket, which is basically one of them, a coax module, and a telephone socket, which is essentially a, te a, a telephone module. Um, now these are very common in lounges of you know, sort of flat blocks of flats and apartments. <coughs> you you typically use these where you've got 
a Sky Plus box or some sort of satellite receiver in your main lounge, and then the, the rest of the TV is fed from your return socket, so then that would probably run this, this here would run onto other rooms, or maybe back to a cupboard or something where an amplifier is, and then distribute to other rooms. So if you had a, a traditional Sky playback system, you could take the RF off the Sky box, shoot it into the other rooms, and then you could watch your Sky box in the other rooms with magic eyes, you can control them, all that sort of stuff. Uh, that, that, although it's still possible with Sky Q, that is, tends to be dying because um, the, the Sky Q you know, mini boxes are served wirelessly, so that, you can argue that process isn't really needed, but it's still, it's still quite popular actually. And, and on the back we have two cables going there, it's from our community visas, some of our quadplex systems, so <coughs> whether you're um, whether you've combined the satellite signals to the, the TV signal, that they would go to there. That's just a straight module, so then that would go to your other rooms, depending on how it's being wired. Again, it, it all depends how the system's been wired, so um, you, you're going to have to figure that out. But, um, like again, these are most common with blocks of plastic stuff like that. And at the end, we've just got a telephone module, um, where you can terminate a bit of telephone cable, free pair telephone cable that I take. Um, so you have a telephone, where it was, which is very common in the old days with sky boxes because they used to want the sky boxes connected to the phone line, which is they don't insist on anymore because you can connect it to the Wi-Fi instead. Um, so you, you see these often with sort of Cat5 modules now instead, so you can have a wired uh, data connection. But uh, that's, that's what that does. So well, I hope you like this video. I hope, I hope you find it informative. I hope this helps you make the right decision when you're buying your, your own sockets and installing your own TV systems. And I hope this helps you fault find if you've got any issues, certainly you know, understanding how the wall plates work and the different types, I, th I think will be helpful to you. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the section below. Uh, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, uh, a like, and a share, or uh, anything, depending on where you watch this on social media or, or something like that. Uh, if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're desperately trying to build followers, and um, I appreciate if you can do that. Uh, and you'll get lots more you know, updates from videos like this. Uh, which, you, you, which you should find helpful, I hope. Um, that's it. I'm Tom Smart from Smart Aerials. Bye for now.